Good afternoon and welcome to the video check-in for today, Thursday, March 31st. I'm doing something pretty interesting and I think actually kind of important this evening. I will be joining Cantor Dan Singer as well as Gregory Singer. Apparently there is a distant familial relationship uh, there that actually goes back to some ancestry in the Ukraine. But regardless, uh, the two of them, Cantor Dan Singer, the cantor of Stephen Wise Free Synagogue, a friend and colleague of mine, and Gregory Singer, who is the music director and conductor of the Manhattan Symphony, are together hosting a concert uh, benefit in support of Ukraine. So I think it's important that we are doing this. I hope it will raise awareness. I hope uh, that we will generate a real feeling of solidarity. I know uh, it's a financial benefit as well. We will be raising money, uh, much needed money to help those suffering in Ukraine. Um, and I will be joining not only the two of them, but also I believe well over 30 of my cantorial colleagues from the tri-state region as we form a chorus of cantors uh, for this um, hopefully important and powerful uh, occasion. Now, the, the concert itself is going to be filled with um, some patriotic music, some beautiful music, some Jewish music, all sorts of things, a really diverse program, and it will be streamed as well, and I'll make sure that uh, we publicize and send out the streaming link as well if people would like to attend. And one of the things that's going to happen, because it's a stream as well as a live performance, is even though the orchestra will take a break, an intermission, uh, we're going to fill that intermission with songs of peace. Uh, I don't think I need to go into too much detail about you know, why we might have chosen songs of peace and how important um, that concept is, but I'm going to talk about it anyway and give you a little uh, brief uh, proof text. It's actually one of my favorite pieces of Midrash. I remember studying it and encountering it the first time in my introduction to Midrash uh, class that I took uh, at HUC way oof, many years ago at this point, 18 or 19 years ago. And I'm going to pull up that text and read for you. Um, in the midst of the Sifre Devarim, this um, this book of Midrash that is basically Midrash or commentary on the book of Deuteronomy, in the 199th Pisca, the, the you know, section 199, uh, the topic is not peace, but war. And it talks about um, obligatory war versus optional war. And there's lots of, you know, lots of rules, lots of interpretation, lots of commentary. One of the things that our Midrash often does and commentary often does is limit things. So this is a good example, right? In the beginning of this text, it says when you approach a city, and that means, a, you know, when, when an army is approaching a city um, for the purpose of war, and then all of a sudden we get commentary on what that might mean. It says a city, but not a town, and a city, but not a village. And the text goes on to engage it in battle, but not to starve it out or to foul its water or to unleash disease within it. In other words, even if you're approaching for war, there's a limit of what kind of place you can approach and what that really means. Battle does not mean wanton destruction. It does not mean all these other things as well. But here's where it gets really interesting. It then says, when you approach that city, you must call out for peace. So it doesn't talk about strategy. It doesn't talk about, you know, maybe treating women and children more, more safely. It, it says you must call out for peace. And then it gets even more interesting. We have this little brief excursion into this amazing phrase in Hebrew, Gadol HaShalom, which literally means great is peace. Peace is great. Gadol HaShalom, great is peace. So it then the, the rabbis here go into this explanation of why that is so important. Great is peace, for even the dead need peace. Great is peace, for even in Israel's wars, they needed peace. Great is peace for those who dwell on high need peace. As it is said, God makes peace up in God's lofty dwelling. And that is a text from Ose Shalom, Ose Shalom Bim Romav. 
the one who makes peace up in God's high place. Great is peace, for the priestly blessing concludes with peace. And Moses, too, was a lover of peace, as it is said, Then I sent messengers from the desert of Kadmut to Sichon, the king of Heshbon, with words, divrei, of peace. Now, that's quite a, uh, you know, exposition just simply on peace. Here's a bunch of places we find peace and why it's so important. And I just thought there was a really beautiful connection between this idea of singing songs of peace during this intermission of the concert and, you know, it fulfills really that sentiment that peace is great. And we certainly have in our musical tradition so many different texts and songs and prayers of peace that I think musically we fulfilled uh, this midrash and showing how great peace is as well. There's, of course, Ose Shalom texts, that simple prayer of peace. There are um, what are called Birkat Shalom, which is the, the, the prayer right before the silent prayer in Aramita. And in the morning um, that we have Sim Shalom, and in the evening we have Shalom Rav, uh, we have texts such as uh, the prophet Isaiah, Lo Yisagoi, um, nation shall not lift up sword against nation, they shall never again learn war. These beautiful texts and ideas of peace. And so I thought I would leave you with just a little taste of, at least in the reform world, one of our greatest uh, tunes, compositions of peace. A little play, a little of the refrain of Cantor Jeff Klepper and Rabbi Danny Friedlander's Shalom Rav, which literally means a whole lot of peace, great peace. Gadol HaShalom, great is peace. Shalom Rahav HaYisrael Amcha Asim Le'olam Shalom Rahav HaYisrael Amcha Tasim le'olam Ki ata hu melech adon L'chol ha-shalom Ki ata hu melech adon L'chol ha-shalom Shalom rahav ha-Yisrael amcha Tasim le'olam Shalom rahav ha-Yisrael amcha Tasim le'olam Tasim le'olam Tasim le'olam